Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and today you're going to basically walk with me while I talk about my subject. You know, I live in central New York, and it gets cold and snowy. And so it's not always conducive to walking outside when it's cold and snowy. You got to put a whole lot of stuff on, and it kind of impedes your walking. So I walk my home course, and I had a video up a long time ago showing the home course, and this is just more proof that I do walk here in the house. And I average about 18,000 steps a day using my buddy the Fitbit to count it for me. But that's not really what this is about, although it is kind of about health. This is kind of a diabetes video. You know, I'm diabetic and I'm supposed to go see the doctor a couple times a year, but most of the time I'm only going once a year. And especially because I've had my glucose numbers looking very good and my A1C has been pretty good so they're not really pushing me to have to come twice a year so anyway I had my appointment last Friday for the year and I go in and the doctor does the test and A1C comes out looking pretty good it's around 6.4 she's happy I've had to adjust my medication my uh, insulin I take two shots a day and I had had to adjust it down because I'd been having some low numbers. Now, you're supposed to, in general, keep it between 80 and 120 uh, glucose number. But for me, anytime my number goes below 90, I start to get dizzy and shaky and whatever. So 90 is a bad number for me. Actually, 100 is not a good number either. So, you know, I put that out there to let you know that everyone who has diabetes doesn't always hit the exact same numbers. It's just not how that works. So anyway, she tests my blood pressure. Blood pressure is great. Everything is great. So then she says to me, as we start looking at the medications, she says, well, what about this Prevastatin? She says, how come you're not taking that? And I said, because you told me I didn't have to take it anymore because I don't have high cholesterol. Because she had put me on this cholesterol medication a couple of years ago. And I said, well, I didn't think I needed it, so I didn't take it. And then when I had my last appointment, she had said, well, you really don't have it, so you're okay. But that was a year ago. So this time I tell her, well, you said I didn't have to take it because I don't have high cholesterol. And she said, well, the American Diabetes Association has changed the regulations, and now we have to recommend that everybody who is declared diabetic has to start taking cholesterol medication because of potential heart issues. I said, so wait, you're telling me that even though I don't have any problem with cholesterol, that I'm supposed to automatically just start taking cholesterol medication? And she said, yes. I said, well, that doesn't sound prudent. And she said, well, we have to make the recommendation because if we don't make the recommendation, then we're in default with insurance and regulations and we could get in trouble so we have to tell you that and so I have to give you a prescription I said well what if I decide I don't want to fill the prescription I don't want to take the medication because I don't have you know cholesterol issues she said well you don't have to take it but if anything happens and it's related to diabetes even if it's not related to cholesterol your insurance company can deny it by saying that you weren't following the recommendations of your physician fully. I said, so basically you're telling me that a medication I don't need, that if I don't take a medication I don't need, that the insurance company could deny all claims related to diabetes, no matter what they are? She said, they could. I said, wow. Now here's the thing. I'm in healthcare. I'm in healthcare finance. There's a lot that I know about coverage and all these different kinds of things, but I had never thought about the one where it says that if you're not totally listening to your doctor, that they could stop treatment, especially when you don't have it. I mean, come on. Yes, I do know that one of the things that diabetics have to worry about is heart issues and that there's this relationship between cholesterol and the heart. But... My numbers are fine. This to me sounds like a money grab. It also sounds like it's a bit over the top. You know, 
I understand that they're looking to prevent issues. I really do. But come on, to make me have to buy a medication that I don't need, spend money that I don't need to spend. Now, after that, we spent some time looking at these different medications. The first one she wanted to put me on was $240 a month for 30 pills. I said, no, uh, -uh that ain't happening. <laughs> so the guy that she had in there, because she had a physician assistant in there with her, he looks up and he finds another one that's $135 a month for 30 pills. I said, no, uh-uh, we're not going that route either. I said, the Prevastatin was only 40 a month and I didn't even want to take that. So we're ending up with something called Crestor that might have a generic of it that came in at $35 for a month's uh, dosage. I said, you know, that's just a shame. I, I just don't understand that. However, I think I mentioned about the two uh, injections a day that I already take, and it turns out that American Diabetic Association is recommending that physicians try to talk uh, new patients or new you know, diabetics into getting on insulin a lot earlier than they do now. Because over the years, and I'll tell you, this is how I always saw it, the doctors were trying to basically make it sound like a real bad thing. You know, if you can't control your diabetes, we're going to have to put you on insulin. And that was the issue I ran into, and I absolutely hated it. Well, now they're telling doctors to stop telling patients that as though it's a penalty. Try to get them on insulin as early as possible because it offers the best uh, protection from, you know, long-term issues that people have from diabetes. And I'm thinking, wow, that's just another way in my mind of getting people to have to spend money unnecessarily for preventive purposes. You know, whatever happened to the idea of prevention basically says, tell them to go to the gym and work out. <laughs> I mean, really, that's how, along with my medication, that's how I started to get my numbers under control in the first place. Because before then, I really wasn't exercising. And like I said, I'm walking a lot every day to keep my numbers low. But to basically tell people to spend all this money when they don't need to for preventive purposes, I got a problem with that. So I've got a prescription here somewhere because I came home and I sat down the paper somewhere and I haven't found it yet. But I will find it and I will go and I'll price it at a few different places and see where I can get the lowest rate. And then we'll see how often I take it. It's just a shame. But I'm wondering what you guys think. Do you think this ideal about having to take medication for issues you don't have is a good thing for preventive purposes? Or does it sound just like a money grab? And it's just, I don't know, it just seems unethical to me. What's your thought? And I want to thank you for walking with me a little bit. Uh, at this point right now, I'm already over 18,000 steps and it's just past four o'clock so we're gonna see what i end up doing for the rest of the day y'all take care and have a good week